What's up everybody, I'm Josh Meek, the Uber Geek. Welcome to Pretty Dece, your daily entertainment and pop culture show. This week, of course, is E3, the massive video game conference where all the big video game companies and console manufacturers show up and show basically what their plans are for the next, you know, year, year plus of video game releases. It's essentially video game Christmas. We find out all the crazy, ridiculous games that are going to excite us over the course of the next year or so. We find out what we're going to be obsessed about in a short few months when they come out. And we get uh, usually a massive plethora of game announcements and game details. Just really just too much to cover in such a short amount of time. Our cup overfloweth with game news. Now, we recorded a Pretty Decent Director's Cut, the long-form edition of this podcast. Uh, that went up yesterday, discussing the EA and Microsoft press conferences in great detail. And of course, since then, we've got Sony coming out of the gates with some really awesome announcements, and now Nintendo. I wanted to take the time and highlight just one of the things that Nintendo talked about. Of course, there's a ton of news. We'll, we'll touch on it more as this week goes along. But the first thing here is I wanted to highlight Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That was a game that we got a ton more details about. Of course, this is a game that had, had been kind of teased before. We knew it was coming, we knew E3 was going to tell us more about this game, and we got a ton of details here. So first of all, we found out like the big selling point for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Switch is that it'll feature every single character that has ever been in a Smash Bros. game in the past. That includes people we haven't seen in a while, like Ice Climbers, like Snake from Metal Gear, uh, Pac-Man, Sonic the Hedgehog, three different versions of, of Link. It'll feature literally every character that has ever been in Smash Brothers, even if it's been 10 years since we've seen them. And we'll also get some new characters. We are, we are seeing the Inkling Kids from Splatoon 2, Ridley from Metroid. But we probably aren't getting, you know, a, a huge list of new characters because the sheer number of like 60 plus old characters that they're putting in this game is going to take up most of their time. As kind of a fun little thing, I just want to read you the list of characters just to give you an idea of just the sheer breadth of characters that are going to be present in this game. I'm going to run through them real fast. Here we go. We've got Mario, Samus, Kirby, Bowser, Link from Breath of the Wild, Donkey Kong, Fox, Falco, Marth, Zelda, Sheik, The Villager from Animal Crossing, Mewtwo, Meta Knight, Sonic Peach, Pikachu, The Ice Climbers, The Inkling Kids, Captain Falcon, Zero Suit Samus, The Wii Fit Trainer, Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard as the Pokemon Trainer, Ness, Lucas, Ryu, Ganondorf, Ike, Cloud, Snake, Jigglypuff, Pichu, Roy, Olimar, Diddy Kong, Lucario, Lucina, Robin, Bayonetta, Mr. Game & Watch, Greninja, Dr. Mario, Rob, Duck Hunt, Pit, Dark Pit, Palutina, Corrin, Bowser Jr., Toon, Toon Link, Young Link, King DDD, Rosalina and Luma, The Me Gunner Sword and Brawler, Wario, Little Mac, Pac-Man, Shulk, Wolf, Mega Man, Luigi, and Yoshi. That, I believe, is all of them. Massive, insane roster. It sounds like it could be very overwhelming at the beginning, but they've accounted for that because they're saying that, you know, starting off your roster is going to be pretty small. It's going to be like the original Super Smash Brothers game was. You will have a handful of people to choose from, but they have, quote, streamlined the conditions for unlocking new fighters. So it'll feel like new ones are showing up constantly and, and you're constantly sort of building out your, your, your roster. Now, we didn't get a lot of details on what that means and what those streamlined conditions are, but I do love a good unlockable in a video game, and I love the idea that I'm going to be slowly earning these fighters, and I'm going to have a reason to keep coming back and playing the game more and more and unlocking all these new people until I've unlocked every single member of this ridiculous roster. I love that. You know, I, I know I know a lot of people wish that things were just completely unlocked from the beginning, but I like these types of unlockables to make me keep coming back and make me keep playing. It gives me extra incentive on top of the game just being, you know, a, a blast to play. Now, Smash Brothers is a game that, of course, is pretty big in the competitive scene, kind of 1v1, but eight-player battles are making their return here, a very popular thing from the series past. And then, of course, we got a bunch of details here about specific changes to specific characters. So I don't want to touch on all of them, but I, I kind of pulled out the ones that seem like the most interesting. 
First up, Mario, of course, has been in all of the Smash Brothers games. He's still here. But Mario is bringing along his buddy Cappy from the uh, the, the newest Super Mario game. Cappy is the awesome little uh, kind of uh, personified hat that helps Mario transform in, into different things. And Mario also is bringing along his wedding outfit and his builder outfit, which is also very cool. Link, as we know him, is dressed up from Breath of the Wild, and he actually gets some new attacks and abilities from that game, like remote bombs, for example. Uh, Pikachu, of course, is showing back up. A Pikachu Libre will be in the game. We're also getting the female Pikachu. You might not know that uh, female Pikachu looks different than regular male Pikachu, but female Pikachu has a heart-shaped tail. It's quite cute. Um, Ryu is in the game from Street Fighter, and in this version, Ryu will always face his opponent in one-on-one -on -one battles. Just like in Street Fighter, you don't have to worry about turning around, Ryu is always going to stay facing his opponent. I think that's a really cool touch and really makes Ryu feel authentic in this game where he didn't the last time we saw him. Speaking of 1v1 battles, as I said, you know, this is a very competitive focused game, which maybe you wouldn't initially uh, know from, from playing Smash Brothers, but it, it has this, this huge scene where people play this game competitively at tournaments for money, and they made a lot of little enhancements that seem directly focused at the the one-on-one -on -one tournament scene. For example, you choose your map before you choose the fighter that you'll play as. So if you have a specific fighter that is perfect on a specific map, you know going into the fighter selection what map you're playing on. It's a little small tweak, but it's going to be a huge change to the tournament scene. And just, you know, in, in general, there are additional UI elements they're going to show for certain characters for things like gauges or to show what item that certain characters are holding and lots more stuff that's specific to each individual character. They're showing you more information in the UI than they have in the past. And they're doing stuff like speeding the game up. Uh, word is from people that got to play this game on the E3 show floor, it's much faster paced than the past couple of editions which is something that the competitive scene is definitely looking for. They've clung to the older Smash Brothers games that were faster paced, and not as many people moved on to the newer games, which were a little bit slower. So, so this is bringing the speed up kind of in general across the board, trying to make that competitive scene happy. Now, we got a ton of information about all the characters and who all was going to be in it, but we didn't get any information about the single player mode, if there is one, or any other kind of party modes. Of course, Smash Brothers has had a weird history with single player games. They did this kind of story driven single player sort of side scrolling platformer at one point. Uh, in, in the Wii U version of Smash Brothers, they did this kind of ridiculous board game as the single player component. So they've been really out there, they've been really experimenting with what a single player of Smash Brothers is. So I really hope that we see something weird and crazy here. Or at the very least, you know, I hope we get a reiteration of, of one of those modes. But they've done weird stuff in the past, and, and I get, kind of fully suspect them to do something equally as crazy here. And, you know, there is a lot more about this game we'll find out as it gets closer to release. We do know it supports GameCube controllers because everyone loves playing Smash on their GameCube controllers. Personally, I'm excited about playing it on the Pro Controller. That's a fantastic controller in and of itself. I don't know if I'll need to break out the GameCube controller to play the game, but I'm glad that that still continues to be an, op an, an option. I think it's very cool that they continue to support that with each updated release of Smash Brothers. So, super hyped for this game. I'm very excited to get in and play as Snake. I'm excited to check out all of these characters combined together. Super crazy cool stuff. You know, it seems like they are really making the ultimate version of Smash Brothers. So the name is incredibly fitting, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So that's going to do it for Pretty Dees for today. Thank you very much for joining me to talk about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. If you like the show and you want to see more new episodes of Pretty Dece, premiere weekdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash show. You can also check out the daily episodes on the podcast feed or on the YouTube channel. You can find that at prettydeeshow.com slash video. You can also catch me on Facebook and Twitter at Show.